Hello, I'm Gail. And hi, I'm Catherine. And we're so pleased to talk with Joy Laver Laverde. That's right. Yes. Uh, our advocate for women aging. Joy is a leading consultant in the senior industry and a trusted advisor in aging and elder care related issues. Now, Joy is the author of two groundbreaking books. The Complete Elder Care came out in 1993 and again in 2009. And in 2017, Who Will Take Care of Me When I'm Old? And she's been featured on the Today Show, CBS Early Show, NPR, USA Today, Wall Street Journal. Joy is also a leader and presenter with the Transition Network, Chicago Chapter. And as we talk with Joy, you will soon see why she's earned the reputation for being a path carver and visionary and how she looks to, and I'm quoting, old people as living answers to our lives. So welcome, Joy. We're delighted to, to have you as our advocate. Yes, thank you. Um, so maybe we could begin by having you just give us a, a, a brief glimpse into how you parlayed your expertise in communications, advertising, marketing, to become a visionary spokesperson for elder care. Well, very early on, I had recognized elder care as a problem in the American society just because I was a freshman in high school and Sister Dorothy, I went to an all girls Catholic high school at Trinity and she was looking for volunteers. And so I went with her to a nursing home on Thanksgiving morning. And that was when I encountered seven people sitting in the dark on Thanksgiving morning. And I could not understand that. So life went on and I went on with a career in public relations and marketing, but I couldn't shake that visual of people being alone on Thanksgiving. And so I was determined to do something about it. And that's when I wrote the first book, The Complete Elder Care Planner. Mm -hmm. My goal was to get people to start talking about the future. Mm -hmm. So very interestingly enough, 10 years ago, I'd been on the road then for 30 years and I had been talking about elder care and family caregiving. Uh, 30 years ago, people started to come up to me after I had given a presentation and they said, I'm doing all this work for my parents and I, I love doing it, but who's gonna take care of me when I'm old? And I knew immediately 10 years ago, this would be my next book. But 10 years ago was too soon to bring out this subject. I had to wait until the world could catch up with yep. family caregiving. Understood. Yeah. You know, you in your book, you say that for you, you believe that old age begins at 90. And uh, so I'm so then who is the audience for, for this book? The audience is for anyone 40 and older. I'm finding people are younger and younger in my presentations now. I do a lot of work in corporate America with employee benefits programs. Oh. And so these are the people that, that are not necessarily rushing to get married. They're certainly not rushing to have children. And they understand the value of planning for their own future self. So this, this book is for 40 plus. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we know that women tend to live longer than men. And um, so can you tell it, it, talk to us about um, issues, uh, planning needs, for, particularly for women? Particularly for women, the number one need is, will I have enough money to finance a longer life? That's number one. And women tend to give their money away more freer, especially as family caregivers. We can't help ourselves, but start uh, putting our hands in our own pockets and sabotage our own retirement. Money is the number one need of women getting older. And the fact that women earn less, uh, you know, at least in many, many situations, they, they kind of start off with a disadvantage. You know, even today, I, I have a, a friend who's very accomplished professionally, very accomplished, is married and does not really understand their family finances. And I talk with her all the time about the need to get on top of this. And um, so even, even younger, I mean, you know, she's 70, but I still think we're younger, younger women, uh, are, are not necessarily taking your advice. 
You know, I read something very interesting, and this is what I learned, that we learn from our parents or where we live how comfortable we feel when it comes to talking about money within the family, that we are watching for role models, whether we're conscious of it or not. So if your friend or other people you know who, who are afraid to talk about money, it's many times because they did not have anyone to model that behavior and that conversation. So there's a lot of fear, just, just the process of talking. Yeah. You know, I when I read your book and I've read it, I, I go back to it because it's not it's not easy to read cover to cover for me. Um, and I've just been struck by how frank you are about uh, the realities of aging, uh, about, you know, you talk about being old and you talk about living alone and dying and death. And and uh, and yet I think you do that with a great deal of respect and uh, a good bit of humor which certainly helps. And I'm just, can you tell us a little bit about how you decided to, to write the book in the way that you have, sort of that it, frank talk? Right. It is my voice. It is my, my experience. And if you have old people in your life, like I do as friends, I, I guess what is happening is the way they communicate with me is the way that I've begun to communicate with others. They are frank. There's no wondering what they're thinking. They tell you things the way it is. And I've come to realize that I depend on that kind of communication rather than trying to guess, well, what do you mean by that? And you know what, you know, I never have to do that with my old friends. They just come out and they say it. And boy, mm -hmm. is that refreshing. Yeah. <laughs> Your book is refreshing. It's also kind of, um, for me, it was kind of scary because there's there's just there's so many things to consider and to plan for, and uh, I think you're just it's very very helpful for us to be thinking about this in our 40s and 50s, and you know not waiting until yeah. there's a crisis. Yeah, you know what's really scary, Catherine, is is being in a crisis and having no choices. Can you give us some ideas of those planning tools and, and what we should be thinking about? Well, the next thing after money is housing. So uh, we can only age in place for so long uh, if we have not made plans to consider the current caregiver shortage or the possibility of living with forgetfulness and living alone. So these are things that you don't want to, or don't even necessarily have to confront as a crisis. If I'm telling you quite frankly, that these are the possibilities and things you need to deal with now, then you can have whatever you want. Mm -hmm. You just need, I, I deliver the bad news, if you want to call it bad or truth. And then, and then it's like, okay, now I know what I need to do. And Catherine, I love that you said you come back to it. You come back to the book. That's exactly the tone that it, that's why the book is written the way it is. Mm -hmm. you, you do one thing and just put it on your, your nightstand for right. a while, do your thing, and then come back to it when you're ready to do the next. Yeah. Um, I think the, you, you do, Gail asked about the sort of planning tools, and I, and I was really taken with the, uh, the time travel technique. Can you tell us about that? Sure. So, so the the first beginning, the first chapters are all about mindset and time travel is a way to gently ease us into the looking into the future without scaring ourselves. So, time travel is a concept that I say stop for a moment and take a breath and and look around and begin the process of observing old people. And by old, I mean anybody who might be 20, 30, 40 years older than yourself. What are they doing? How are they healthy? Are they not healthy? And begin the process of then going even a step further and asking them questions. What would you do if you were me, if you were planning for the next 30 years? What would you do? What do you wish you had done? So time travel is taking a look at the people who are already our future and saying mm -hmm. they could help me right now and they will. Especially I'm writing that down. Important for younger women 
to take to ask those questions and observe the older people in their lives so that they can get a leg up. Uh, and, but also, I think it's important, isn't it, for uh, older people to be talking about this? It, you know, what should I have done when I was, what, what I might have done when I was younger, how, how I might have looked at this differently if I had only known what might be coming. Yes, it's a way of validating their lives when we begin the process of giving them the floor, giving them the space to then interact with us. It's validating an older person's life means listening and and being there for them. And maybe they want to even take the conversation a little further. Anytime they speak, for me, is an opportunity to learn and to give. Is this what you mean by um, old, you see old people as living answers to our lives? Yes, yes. I mean, I did a lot of research when I did both of my books and I had to go to the experts, but I always go back to the old people who are the real experts. They're, <laughs> real living, experts. they're living our future. Yeah. Um, you In your book, you also talk about the, the core self as a predictor of who we become in old age. Can you tell us more about that? Just This is then the process of validating ourselves and not second guessing ourselves. We know what we like. We know what we don't like. Don't second guess yourself. Go with that. Be yourself. Don't be, don't be worried about trying to please others at this stage in our lives. We, we, I also say in my book, we are the one and only person we can always depend on. Hmm. Yeah, that's a little scary, actually. <laughs> Catherine, I don't mean to scare you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think for me, it's um, this notion of housing the future is um, it's something that I'm starting to think about, and I I really don't have uh, maybe it's maybe it's premature because I just cannot seem to come up with a vision for what next or where next. Can you help me? Um, I always say that, that when, when nothing's coming up in our brains, I think that there's just, it's because you don't have enough information. So I would say, so instead of looking for what, what is housing, I would ask the question, what do I mean by housing? I would begin there and let that, let your creativity flow. Don't worry about four walls and a roof. What do I mean by housing? By housing, housing what, and home. And what, what do I mean by where do I want to live? Mm -hmm. You know, what do I mean by these words? Make, bring meaning to your questions. Everything that, that you answer, all these questions you answer will be uniquely yours. And you, we, this is how we stay true to ourselves. Yeah, that's good advice. <laughs> Do you suggest that we we uh, start a process at a certain period in time? Um, you know that that so that when that time comes, we all we can act on. I don't see it, Gail, in terms of time. I see it in terms of need. So so if um, I have one thing figured out, let's say I have the money thing figured out then I can just put that aside and say, what well, don't I have it figured out? Like you, Catherine, the housing thing. And that's a big one for all of us because, because it takes uh, the thought process of looking into what we don't know. So where we start will just kind of depend on what you have already figured mm -hmm. out and mm -hmm. what you don't. Mm -hmm. um, why, why do you... You seem to, to your, one of your messages is that we should celebrate our age, own our age, celebrate our age. And why is that important? It's important because, as we all know, we're not necessarily surrounded by, by a society that will do anything like that for us. And celebrate, I mean, being with women like you who have, who have, decided that this this is we're going to name the age we're going to we're going to be together we're going to talk with each other it's important because we're going to create our own our own networks of of authenticity 
which is very much what the transition network is about. You know, we all get together and we are talking about things that are real to our age brackets. We're no, we're no longer uh, getting distracted by things that used to distract us and cause us to think about as we were younger. Those are all valid. But right now, when we we continue to grow and we're with women who are growing alongside us, the mm-hmm. conversations become so much more authentic and yeah. real. We need that. We, we do need that. So uh, some of our listeners uh, may not know about the Transition Network. And maybe could you tell, tell us a bit about that as a national organization and then your leadership also? Sure. Well, when I was doing research for who will take care of me when I'm old, I said to myself, I'll bet there's an organization out there for women for a certain age. And sure enough, after a lot of digging, I discovered the Transition Network. So I called up the executive director and I said, who are you and what do you do? And she proceeded to tell me that it is an organization, a national organization for women who are 50 and older. There are chapters all over the country, and we have one in Chicago, as well as for women who don't live near a chapter, they can be members in an online uh, organization like that. We used to, before COVID, we got together a lot uh, every day of the week, something was going on. We volunteer, we lead lives of purpose, and we're just in the beginning stages of, of putting together a caring collaborative where some of the members may need assistance going uh, with appointments, uh, transportation, maybe bringing food if they're sick and so on. It, I've met the most incredible women, including you, in this organization. I'm on the steering committee, which uh, and my role is to be in charge of membership. Great. So, uh, and uh, getting back to your book, I know that currently you have an a online book club organized around who will take care of me when I'm old. How is, how is that set up and how is that going? Well, this has been uh, organized by me through the Transition Network. We're on our third book club meeting, and it will end at the end of November. Uh, I wanted to get the ball rolling. and We have women come from all over the country, members and non-members of the Transition Network. And we sit around and we talk about something that someone might have read and how it affected them. Um, my my goal then when I finish the next one, which is happening in the beginning of November, the, the events are sold out, they sell out immediately, that my goal is, is women who have been in my book clubs will continue the conversation, maybe gather five of them together on Zoom and keep Great. it going. Great. Um, you, I know that COVID has changed uh, <laughs> the kind of presentations and in-person work that you, you know, you've been doing, but how are you, what, what else are you involved in and to, to promote the advocacy for elder care? I uh, mentioned early, I, I went to a Catholic school and I continue my spiritual journey through my church. And so I do a lot of work with the church uh, in, in helping people uh, become uh, less isolated and so forth. So my my personal when I when I'm not doing the social thing, I'm doing the spiritual thing. I I wanted to go back to yoga so bad, but I'm not ready to do that yet in that closed environment. But meditation and yoga, physical health, these are all very important things to me. I I'm constantly inviting people to walk with me. Uh, they tell me I walk too fast. <laughs> Um, and have I you met to... Gail? <laughs> have you walked with Gail yet? <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> so, so walking, walking with others has been really important to me. A lot of walking by myself as well. And you live in Chicago, correct? Yes, mm-hmm. I'm in the old town area, so oh. I'm so lucky. I'm right by the lake. Yes. Yeah. Um, what what uh, is there another? Are you working another book? Is there what else? What next for you? 
What's next for me is um, since since the book has come out, what has been happening is exactly what I wanted to have happen, and that would be corporate corporations, companies, and manufacturers of products and services that serve the mature market are coming to me and asking me to work with them on on positioning their messages in order to to make sure that people get the information and the products and services they need. So while I'm not doing a lot of traveling, there is a lot of product endorsement now going on, learning more about some of the things that are coming out for the, the aging market. My my The most fun I'm having is with a gentleman who has a very successful business. He creates robots. And uh, we're talking about how the robots are, are going to be a part of our lives. Well, I I... I used to think, oh, no, no, that can't happen. But when I met Rudy, his robot, he, he was fabulous. And so I'm, that's what I'm doing. I'm, I'm working a lot with companies that are doing some amazing things with the mature market. And they're asking me to help them with their marketing and be a spokesperson. That's exciting. It is. I, I can see robots taking the place of caregivers. Yeah. The, um, they're, yeah. They are, they are able to lift people. They are able to read if you're well or not. They're able to make a phone call. Uh, there's all kinds of neat things that are going on. And uh, technology is here uh, on a whole other level with caregiving. It's wonderful what's going on. Yeah, that's great. What else, what else is, give us a, a few more clues there about what else is going on. The wearables, what the clothes we wear ha will have uh, uh uh, little little discs in them, and that they will be able to tell uh, others who need to know what's going on. Uh, of course, there have, for a long time there have been products that we can purchase that indicate whether or not we have opened up the medicine cabinet cabinet to get our medications or even gotten out of bed. If you there's some mats, some rugs that you could put at the at your bed when you get out, and and if if it if it shows that you didn't get out of bed yet by noon, um, then then that's uh, cause for someone to get in touch with you and say, "Hey, is everything okay?" So many products, just so many products. And one of the, I think, uh, I'm I'm so glad that that you're called on to to help with all of this because there's there's having products, and then how do you present the products in a way that it, it respects the. Oh, older person that has, uh, you know, their dignity, uh, and is not in an underhanded way sort of making fun of because mm -hmm. I've seen some of that. It's horrible. Yeah, the the media, the advertising has a lot to learn about the language they use. Uh, they're still using words like elderly and senior. Those are just obsolete words. So did I just use that word? No, you didn't. <laughs> I don't think you did. Um, but go what ahead. are the what are the words that the terms that we want to be using? Um, older adults is okay. Adults, people, uh, baby boomers, you. <laughs> I mean, we we don't need to classify ourselves. We just need to say, you know, this is this is uh, good stuff. That's important. It it really is. Mm -hmm. We. Um, I spend a lot of my time because I'm I'm a consultant for companies. I, I spend a lot of my time talking about the language. Uh, dementia is another one. People misuse. They say dementia sufferers. People people who you know are confused or they're a burden. It's like this is all so wrong, you know. We dementia is a chronic condition, just like cancer or heart disease. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I've done a lot of work with companies that want to change their ways and 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 have it be more respectful. Good for you. Keep it up. <laughs> <laughs> I can see where you're going to be kept busy for a long time to come. Yeah, yeah I I am. Um, I'm ready. You're ready. Yes. Um, are there other uh, other? I'm gonna go back to your book for a minute. And and are there other messages, other areas within in the book that you would would like to highlight? 
Well, um, the relate the I call it the revolving door of relationships. This is something we don't necessarily think about as we plan for our future selves. So if anyone watching the podcast has already got all their legal documents in order and they think, well, okay, good, I got that done. The thing they need to remember is to review those documents on a, on a yearly, six months to a yearly basis and make sure that the people that they have named as agents for them for their healthcare or their finances are still able to do that. So it might be uh, maybe we've named someone who is not capable anymore. Um, it happens all the time. Uh, so, so we've got to review our paperwork. Mm -hmm. Which is another thing that um, I really need a lot of encouragement <laughs> to do. <Okay. laughs> I'm coming over. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Joy, I'll, I'll, I'll go ahead, Gail. No, I was just saying I'll keep you accountable. Oh, there you go. I know. Joy, I'm wondering, how do you think about your own age and aging? Well, I'm so fortunate. I have had good role models. I look at my mom and I look at my grandmother and uh, both of those women uh, could walk into a room with self-respect and dignity. And uh, that's how I look at it, too. I, I don't have a lot of conversations about ageism because I just don't know what that is in terms of, of what it means to be in the presence of other people. Uh, because my mother did, did show me that she mattered when she walked into a room. And even when people were not talking to her, it, she wasn't, it didn't matter to her. She knew who she was. And, it, and she didn't go into another conversation called, oh, nobody's talking to me. But she would sit there very quietly and she would observe. And she was so, so elegant in the way that she, she conducted herself no matter what. And that's how I think about my aging. Wonderful role model, my goodness. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So ageism doesn't really exist in your her world or your world because you just you don't allow it, you don't pay attention to it. Right, right. And I've not even experienced it. Uh -huh. And if I have, I wouldn't know it. <laughs> <laughs> well, if these corporations are inviting you to do work for them and be a spokesperson, it's clear that you've made it clear to them to the world that you are, you matter. Yeah, yeah. And I have really good relationships with people of all ages, mm -hmm. all ages. Uh, and I, and I, and I, I look people in the eye and I, and I, when they're, when I'm with them, I'm really with them. I'm not distracted. And they sense that. Are you, are you taking your own advice and planning your future and, and uh, using the tools that you know are important to use? Yes, and, and um, not only that, but the, the advice never ends. So that if somebody says something that I didn't know, I, I listen to that, I'm, I'm flexible, I'm constantly learning. And, um, and I know that even though I have plans in place, they could change on a dime and I'm prepared for that. Yeah. Well, this is a wonderful. Thank you, Joy, so much for, for joining us. We are, um, we all will all benefit greatly from the work that you do and I'm, and I'm from your books, certainly. And I'm really happy that you are consulting with these corporations and, and the product lines, because that is, that is essential for all of us. So thank you for thank everything. Thank you so much. You're welcome.